Hey, welcome back to the Victoria's Little Podcast. I'm Victoria. This is episode 35. I'm a knitwear designer and knitter in the Pacific Northwest on an island uh, close to Seattle. Uh, it's June 21st. So today is the official first day of summer. It's actually sunny. So we've had a really bad cold, coldest spring on record. Uh, up here in the Pacific Northwest, everywhere else in the United States is super hot and like over a hundred and like dying. And we're just been like so cold all of spring and even into the late spring here into June. So it's supposed to get warmer the rest of the week. It's really encouraging. It's just hard to go from winter into spring that doesn't really change. And then be like, is it going to be this way all the way into fall? Cause it's just hard, hard on the body. <gasps> Hard on the energy, hard to get energy levels to do things, hard to get excited because it's just been the same for months and months and months. So it's really encouraging that it's sunny today. It's a little sunny yesterday. It's supposed to be sunny all week. Um, today I'm wearing Meridian Lines, which is a, a linen wool and linen wool and alpaca <laughs> uh, blend from Pearl Soho. Uh, all these little, I think the linen bits are all these little white bits that are poking out. It's one of my favorite patterns that I've designed and it's a good one for the summer because of the linen content and it's a fingering weight yarn, so it's lighter. Um, but yeah, it's a little too warm maybe to wear it right now, but uh, it's really fun to knit. She's got a lot of texture, pretty easy, mostly garter. And um, I love the three color combination. It was really fun to pick. I actually had these colors in my stash already, um, but they really went nicely together when I designed this one last year. Came out in September, so it's kind of like the perfect end of summer transitional season. Shawl, I just wanted to show it today because I haven't talked about it in a while. They have really, really beautiful colors on their website. So if you um, enjoy color as much as I do, you'll really enjoy looking at their linen quill selection. And they do make linen quill in worsted if you ever need a, a blend of worsted weight yarn for a project. Really, really lovely colors. I think the black is kettle black. I think the white was wheat and the pinkish it was peach stone, I think, were the three colors. So yeah, it's really soft and cozy. It's very, very easy to knit with. And um, linen quill isn't too expensive. Um, I can't remember the specs, but it's really affordable yarn. So if you're looking for a summer project, you should give this a try. It's a big square, but you knit it from corner to corner. So you start uh, not that corner. <laughs> you start this corner and then you get bigger on either side and then you get to the peak in the middle and then you start to decrease until you're on the other corner. So it's a really fun construction. It means that the beginning and the end of the shawl are both fast and it's like the middle that's the biggest time consuming part. Um, but yeah, I love playing around with shawl constructions because I do really like top down triangle shawls, but um, they're really hard to knit at the end, right? Because you've got like 300, 300, 400 stitches. So some of the ones I've designed are just like playing around with that. Like, where do you do the big work? Do you do it at the beginning? Do you do it at the end? This one does it in the middle. Because if you want a piece that's significant in size, you really can't get away from having to work across a lot, really long rows. So it's just fun that you do these ones in the middle. And I love tassels a lot. So I put tassels on every end. The uh, other shawl that I designed that's really good for summer is Ayaya, which I had on last time. All over lace pattern with some garter interruptions. It's a, just really briefly give you a description again. It's a linus shaped shawl, so it's a biased. So as you get bigger, you're also angling off to one side. 
So you keep going, you keep going, you keep going until it's big enough. And then you cast off this hem, like 200 stitches at once. There's two different sizes in this one. So you can make like more like a shawlette size, which is like this big. <laughs> or you can make the full size, which is like this big. So this is a fun one. You get a lot of wingspan. So if you either like to wrap your shawls multiple times or find your shawls are falling off your shoulders a lot, this is a better, a better construction. And uh, I used a yarn, a singles yarn from a homestead house that is just really lovely to work with. Uh, it's very soft and it's held up really nicely. Uh, was it a single? No, it wasn't a single. It was her non-superwash uh, fingering weight, probably a four ply, but yeah, anyways, it was really soft. This is rose gold. Anyways, those are my fun, if you need my fun summer design choices, if you need a, a pattern to work on this summer or to add on another one. I did just have a pattern come out with the Brooklyn Tweed Summer Collection and it launched, my pattern came out last Wednesday. They're doing two patterns uh, and each, two patterns of the collection come out every Wednesday. So today's Tuesday. So there'll be another two that come out tomorrow. But my pattern launched last week called Widen and it's a an asymmetrical shawl that starts with the biggest section first. I'll just draw you a, a doodle here. Oh, that's not a good doodle. <laughs> Drawing while you're holding the paper in the air is not a good idea. It doesn't give you very straight lines. Okay. Okay. So it'll it'll look like this. <laughs> very exciting. Uh, no, it. Uh, you start on this as your cast on edge. So this is the biggest uh, rows you'll do or right away. And then you decrease on this one side and you make a right angle. And so as you get to the end of the shawl, you're working less and less rows. So... I just had um, somebody that sampled it for Brooklyn Tweed say to me that they really enjoyed it. it did a really beautiful green one and I, green or maybe it was a gold one. Um, and I said, did you find the end of the shawl like really fun because the rows are so short? And she said, yes. That she did really appreciate getting the work over at the beginning. And I think because projects, I don't know, it could go both ways. When you're excited about a project, you have a lot of a lot of motivation to work on it. And so you can put that into right away into like the wrong longest rows and like get that over with, or you could have the, like, you could be working on it and it could bum you out because you're having to do 200 stitches at first. So really, I guess it depends on your perspective, but it's a great shawl. If you do um, knit that one, just be aware that all the work comes at the beginning. And then once you get maybe probably halfway through, it'll get much, much faster as you decrease. Yeah. So that came out. They, um, are selling it on Ravelry and on brooklyntweed.com and it'll always be sold in those two places. So no need to wait until I'm selling it. I don't probably won't be directly selling it, but I do get a percentage of the sale every time anyone buys it. So yeah, I have whips. I have a new whip. You know how little I cast on, <laughs> I cast things on, uh, and I have like maybe a little bit of progress on uh, one thing to show you. What's this? Oh, I'm like looking at my linen bags here and being like, what's in this bag? <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> oh, I forgot about you. Shoot. I should have worked on you. Um, but I also have a finished object that I may have shown on here I know I've talked about it a couple different times, but I'm not sure I actually showed it finished nor with the tassels on. So this is a product that I'm going to offer for offer to my newsletter subscribers for free because it's not like overly complicated. It's very simple, but I want to kind of make it a little perk for those who are subscribed. So it is this. It's a line of shape. Also, you start in this corner and then you knit and you get to the peak and then you cast off this whole 
end. I hope that that's clear. If anybody hasn't made these shawls and like is a little confused about the construction, it's very fun and very easy. And you can, the, the reason why I wanted to design one and, and give it to my subscribers is because it's the kind of construction where regardless of how much yarn you have, if you have a, you know, enough to make a shawl, you can just stop when you run out of yarn because you cast off this edge all at once. So you just need to go until you have enough left to bind off and that's it. So if you don't know, you know, if you don't have, like say you have an unmarked skein, I definitely have those in my stash where I got something from someone. I don't know how much it is, or you only have two of something or maybe like two and a half, or you want to do a bunch of stripes or color block sections. Like you can use up yarn. So this is a good, what they call a stash buster where you can make fun, um, little shawls. And because of the shape, you get a wide enough wingspan to actually try this on. This is two skeins of Malabrigo Rasta, which is a bulky weight, right? Bulky, chunky. It's big. I used, oh, I used at least a 15. <laughs> it's funny. I finished it in the spring uh, a few months back. So, and I have it written down. So when I make the pattern, I'll do it right. But I can't quite recall it right at the second, um, what needle size, but you use a big needle size. And so it goes really quickly. I think I knit this I don't want to say a couple hours, maybe three or four hours. I really put into the timing of this thing. So, and I did nice and open because this yarn is really dense. So if you were to knit it at a smaller gauge, it would be, it would be like a, a solid, almost plate like, but yeah, it's actually with two skeins of Rasta, I can actually wrap it around my neck. Just, just, you know, you don't get a lot of yardage in those skeins. So I'm really happy that it actually worked out. I blocked this, this thing like really, really far too. I was like trying to make it as big as possible. And then I used the teal tassels because I didn't have any yarn left. I had a very small amount, which was the point. And then I just used a, a ball of Malabrigo Rios, which is their worsted super wash that I had. I've had this color and use it in many different things because it's so beautiful. This is teal feather. Um, I'll put the name for the, the Rasta down below. I always forget what it is, but anyways, so nice little bulky project. It would be great for gifts in the holiday season and just using up those skeins that you love that you don't know what else to do with because you don't have a lot of them. So yeah, I'm going to write it up and get it out. Hopefully Hopefully by October, um, maybe a little earlier, just so that people can follow the pattern for Christmas and for winter. So let me know if you're excited about it. Like I am, I'm glad I, I just was looking for, um, I, I earlier and I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, I never talked about it when it was finished. So yeah, it's really fun. Okay. So I'll show the project that didn't get any progress or well, not that I decided I need to back out. So I think I, I probably showed it at this stage last time. I did block it. I wanted to see how it would block this yarn as um, Knit Picks Stroll. And I wanted to see if the colors would bleed at all um, and how the gauge would change with blocking. And it's beautiful. I don't think, I haven't measured it yet and compared, um, but it's blocked really nicely. I'm not going to finish it as is because it's a little, well, what was I going to decide? It's a little too small for me. I used a size zero with this. So this is, this is regular fingering weight yarn and I um, used a size zero and it's a little small on me. So either I'm going to go up and use a size one or I'm just going to grade this for the size just below mine. And, and I want to, you know, knit up another pair in my size. It's just a little too snug, but I love everything else about it. I may shorten it. It looked a little bit like, um, the tights that often like you wear as when you're like a witch for Halloween and you wear striped leggings or something. It looked a little bit like that, which is not my intention and it doesn't really matter. I just thought, well, maybe it wouldn't look quite as reminiscent to that if I made it a little shorter and had only like three stripes or something. Uh, I do, I'm going to knit another pair 
in um, navy and orange that I think will look really nice. So I was kind of planning on measuring this and then starting a new pair with the other yarn and going like a little bigger and seeing if I can get my size a little better, whatever I decide. But uh, that was a few weeks back that I um, halted working on the project because it didn't fit, which happens. Um, the other long standing project I've had is a uh, great love, which I'm not done still. Got a little sad that it was going to be over, which is a funny, funny feeling to have about a knitting project where you're like sad that you're going to be done with it. Cause I've been working on it for so long. It's sort of, I've been, I'm attached to it as a, as a project, as opposed to being excited that it's, that I'm almost done. It is of course warm and probably won't get a lot of wear out of it because it's really wooly. For a few more months, um, it's also a really good weight. It's like really um, substantial now. I did add the pockets. This is what I did maybe beginning of last week. And then I was like, oh, it takes a really long time to get across a row. <laughs> like I've been doing the whole time. I just all of a sudden was like, ah. Oh. So it's really long now. It's going to be, yeah, mid thigh, which is exciting because I don't have any sweaters like this. I don't have any black sweaters. So I'm excited about that. I probably have probably five or six inches to go and then I'll have to do the pocket flap, but that's it because everything else is done. Sleeves are done. It's such a great fit too. That was one of the things that I really enjoy working on a project that I know is fitting really well. That is like just exciting. You're like making something that is not a question about whether or not it's going to work out or not. Cause every time I try it on, I'm like, Oh yeah, this fits so well. So, um, yeah, I put the sleeves waiting to confirm whether or not they're the right length until the end. Anyways. So I'll try to get motivated. And now that it's hot, keep start working on it again. Um, the last thing is not the last thing, second to last thing. Um, I did make a little bit more progress on them working on all the bul bulky, pulling all these bulky projects out. Uh, this is Rasta, um, Mal Malabrigo Rasta in Costa, I think is the colorway. This is a good night day pattern. Nice bulky quick knit. I had not separated for the sleeves net last time, but now I have. So I haven't obviously forgot about this project for like a couple weeks. Probably worked on it at the beginning of last week, but a lot's happened since then. So, um, yeah, a little bit of progress, but I think it needs to sit poking out so I can see it as opposed to like all tucked away. So I totally forgot about it. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to have that one done before the fall. And then I decided I needed something a little more fun. Um, you know, sometimes when my design ideas, I have a, like a, the striped sock and I have a lopey shawl that are stuck. Just like, I'm not, I need to get back into like the rhythm of working on them or yeah, I need a timeline. Sometimes you just like lose motivation for things. They're, the ideas are great. They look great. It just, for whatever reason, sort of like stall. And it's really hard to get excited. And then I end up kind of not knitting a lot because I feel like I should knit on my designs. But my designs are not like totally motivating me on their own. And so, I don't know, I just end up not working on much, but I let myself cast on something fun just for the sheer need of like, I don't, it doesn't need to be work related. It also like, doesn't need to be something that takes quite a lot of planning. Like with great love, so much planning, so much 
um, minute decision making and like super control of everything and like, oh, the sleeve isn't fitting right and I have to take it out and this isn't going here and, uh, you know, like really, really like paying a lot of attention and trying to be really careful in my choices and, you know, me, like I like to micromanage myself when it comes to knitting and um, that works out a lot of the time and I get projects and I get finished objects that are perfect or like as close to perfect as I could possibly manage to get them. And that gets a little tiring sometimes and I just want to have fun. Um, so I wanted to cast on the Easy V by Caitlin Hunter, which is a worsted weight pullover from the top down with this beautiful V, sh v shaping. So I'm going to show you in a sec. Um, I use stash yarn, which is also very satisfying. I uh, have a bunch of pishkin from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I have all these colors to show you. Um, here's the main color. This is the elk antler, my little elk, elk antler swatch. And then I had Paul Newman. I can't remember what this purple one is. And I know what it is, but I can't find it. I cannot find the word in my head. And where there's original, which is this beautiful caramely orange. And then I also had this, which is an indigo natural dyed. Two ply Rambouillet, which is what um, Pishkin is from Farmer's Daughter. But this is from the local color fiber, Farm and Fiber, Emily Zhang, um, that I dyed in one of her indigo classes, natural dye classes, a couple years back. I had a couple, two skeins. This is really, really close. This is the exact same breed. It's both, it's a two ply as well, has the same look same behavior as Pishkin. It's, it's a little thicker. This is like a heavy DK light worsted and this is definitely a worsted, but it's close enough. Here's my swatch. First, I tried those three colors together and then I was like, blue. So I could have gone with the top one, which is very cohesive and nice. Um, the colors work out really well, but the blue just did something else for me. Looks like a cloud. And I wanted to have, I wanted to do something unconventional or not unconventional, something I normally wouldn't do, like colors I normally wouldn't choose. So the blue and the gold and the purple just sort of did that for me. And here's where I'm at. So this is the cool hem uh, neckline. Did you make the little V? This is the front here. And then the color works so far. Looks great. And I'm just starting to use the purple again. So I think this is going to be really fun. Um, it's just a little bit out of my wheelhouse, wheelhouse color wise and maybe like texture wise, but it's really, really fun. I did pretty much all of this color work. Yeah. All of this color work yesterday. So I did a, a good chunk and, um, It's going to be nice. I am. Um, this color is really close. Well, like looking at my skin color and then looking at this, they're like not that close, but I think from a distance, um, it's maybe too close to my skin. So I, ha I have, and I had a, a sweaters quantity of it. So I'm really grateful to have had something, some other colors to mix in to get, give it a little bit more life. Um, and uh, we'll see what it looks like when the body is in that color and the sleeves are in that color too. So, but yeah, it's exciting. And it's just for fun. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, I wanted to know what you all thought about knitting for the season. Spring and summer kind of have this like, oh, we knit and we all use wool a lot, but now it's hot. What do we do? And it's not like a mat, it's not like there's options, obviously. There's a lot of patterns and really beautiful yarns in um, plant fibers and all that kind of thing. But I wanted to know what you've done in the past, if you knit for the season you're in, or if you knit for the next season. So like it's June 21st, it's the first day of summer. Technically we have four months until fall. Like, do you get excited about fall projects and you want to cast on, um, things for fall 
I know some designers will publish a sweater pattern in June to be like, you can knit this now and then you'll have it for your the fall. Or do you like to be led by the season you're in? So you want to cast on a, a summer tee or a light um, airy shawl like once you're in summer? Or do you do that in the spring? Uh, I just wondered if that's even like something that you're like aware of or choices that you make about it. And I wanted to know if you could tell me about a knit that you've made for a particular season. Um, and like what, like did you make it ahead and did you end up wearing it the next season? Or did you make something in the summer and then like finished it on time and like got to wear it? So I have definitely made summery items that I did not finish. <laughs> like I'll, I kind of get pulled into like what's happening right now. Um, I want right now I want to design things for summer because it's summer um, but it gets too late I don't I, it takes me months to develop stuff and to get it out so it's really too late for this year which is always really sad because I'm like oh another season is gone and I didn't get a, a design out for that season um, but I do get usually in July and August is when I'm like I should make a t-shirt <laughs> And it's really exciting and I use my stash or buy yarn and then I'll work on it a little bit and then it'll be fall and, you know, it starts raining here and you're like, oh, well, which is, doesn't mean I couldn't finish it because there's all lots of opportunities to wear t-shirts underneath cardigans and to layer up here. So it's not like the end of the world, but the enthusiasm is generally like a short lived thing. I have cast on, um, an all over lacy eyelet sweater in, well, I cast it on in August. This is the tensile by uh, Emily Green. I cast it on in August when it came out or right after it came out. Didn't work on it for like a couple years and then picked it back up, I think, when COVID started in March and I didn't work for a little while. And I got that, I got it done before summer. And so that was really satisfying to be like, oh, now it's the season for this sweater and I'm done with it. So I just was wondering if what your experience with that has been. Um, I'm knitting a Lopi sweater now and that's out of season, but I started in November. So it, it would be great if I wasn't knitting it in July and August because it'll be so hot and it'll be like uncomfortable to sweat. We don't have, well, we do have air conditioning in this house. Um, but it's not super cold air conditioning and you kind of have to be in the same room as it to really be benefiting it. So this space actually gets quite warm in the summer. Um, but yeah, summer knits. You can always wear, if you live in a place where there's lots of air conditioning, you'll probably want a shawl or maybe a light sweater if you're gonna hang out in spaces like that. Like when I go to the grocery store, almost any time of year it's cold in the grocery store because they're pumping cold air on the produce for sure and lots of other fridges and the meat section is really cold generally so anyways I am going to work on my new cast on for a little bit and maybe knit a lopi swatch for a <laughs> project for the winter as I say that I'm definitely thinking about planning ahead now because like I said it's too late for me to cast on I did want to put out a new summer -y shawl that was similar to II this year. It just didn't happen because I would have had to start it in, in January, I think. That's just hard. I'm inspired by what's currently happening, but I need to be producing something earlier to get it to you in the season that it's time in. So either I need to get over that and start publishing it, things whenever, or I don't know. But anyways, I'm gonna swatch with Obi. All right, see you next time.